United Against Cancer. today's edition of our United Against Cancer interview series where we're interacting and engaging lots of advocates, scientists, researchers, policymakers that are involved in the cancer control global landscape. Today we're going to be talking with somebody who is very experienced and a good friend of mine. Uh, she's from Brazil and she's going to tell us much more about herself Today, we're going to be chatting with Dr. Myra Kalefi, who is the president and chair of FEMAMA, which is a non-governmental organization that is focused on breast cancer. She's a breast oncologist with very wide training from the UK, the US, and has also led a lot of initiatives in her home country of Brazil. Dr. Myra, bon dia. Good to see you, okay, as yeah. always. <laughs> so, Dr. Myra, today, tell us a little bit about the background of your... You have a lot of extensive background in breast oncology, trained in different high-end institutions. I believe it's uh, at Guy's Hospital in the UK and so on. Uh, so, tell us about your, your background in breast surgery and how you see the future of you know, personalized medicine emerging for cancer patients. Um, maybe I should back off a bit and tell us a bit about yourself, your your the hats that you wear, say Mama, the IGCC, and your role in the CCAN initiative in your city of uh, Porto Alegre. Thank you for having me, Zainab. Uh, I yes. think it's a great opportunity to know each other and for people that are going to see us, is uh, is really uh, what we both want is to inspire people to become the new generation or to become part of actively in the society. And uh, I think that uh, what happened to me happens to many of doctors as well when we embarked in the in as being uh, supportive to patients, we need to do something else than uh, medicine in our patients' clinics. We need to, to make sure that we are understanding, they understand what we need to do together. And I think this is what happened to me. I am a dedicated uh, breast surgeon uh, with over 40 years of experience now and uh, mm -hmm. uh, really dedicated to amplify the voices of female cancer patients with the purpose of promoting changes in access to early diagnosis and proper treatment. Uh, when I was doing my studies in at Guy's Hospital, uh, as you know, specialized in breast cancer, I realized that uh, it was a big taboo, and uh, and the word cancer was not even uh, talked in Brazil yet, as it should. And I, I was really paying attention of the movements, what's going on in, in the world, uh, mainly in the United States, and I was in UK, but watching what was happening in the United States, when um, uh, the first lady, uh, of uh, that was like Nancy Reagan was diagnosed with cancer, and thanks to the mammography that she did as a screening, she mm -hmm. was found with a very early cancer, a breast cancer, and was she was cured. And she started the movement there that was really resonating what. what I was thinking that I needed to involve the, the, the community. And then I went to the United States. I did my postdoc in, in Nashville, Tennessee. 
Mm. And I stayed there for three years almost. And uh, I did in genetics, bio molecular biology at that time. So this mm. is why I'm very, very close to the idea of personalized medicine. I'm, I'm talking about the late 80s, early 90s, when mm. we started all this idea that cancer was systemic mm. and also genetic. Mm -hmm. So I think came back to Brazil for 1993. I started a state NGO together with psychologists, other, other breast specialists and patients. And then I started something that uh, really, really, really uh, is very dear to me, that it was the Institute of Breast Disease, not only cancer, because I couldn't use cancer at the first time. Mm. And that was the Institute. And that was, is just last week, was 30 one years old <laughs> and, and that was really really nice yesterday uh, we did the uh dinner, the dinner. For, yeah to to mm -hmm. collect uh money for the ngo and, and it was crazy. over a thousand people well from done. the porto alegre society clapping well and done well engaging the movement. And then well later on, I started FEMAMA because I thought that couldn't be just one state. And there okay. were other people. There mm. were other people working on the same way. And then we started a federation. FEMAMA stands for a federation of NGOs that are um, dedicated to women, First, mm -hmm. female cancer, but with a very strong relation to breast cancer. This is mama. Mama, mama. in Portuguese is breast. It's breast. Uh, very interesting. Well done. Congratulations for all the major milestones that you have achieved. It's not easy to run one NGO. Uh, for or one institution for 40 years, but you have brought a federation of organizations together and raising funds for not just uh, female cancers, breast cancer, but issues around uh, women, which in our, we know in, is quite a lot and we need to focus on it a lot more. So now with your, now we can move to the next stage. With your extensive background in breast uh, surgical oncology, and I know you're still practicing, you're still an oncologist and you're still operating because sometimes I call you and you have patients, uh, theater days and so on. So well done. It's important that I understand where you're coming from when you say after working in the clinics and theater for so long, then you realize that there has to be more to this oncology thing. You have to open it up and uh, have more awareness. For us, we see a lot of late detection. And so that was one of the prompts for me. When you see a woman who you can't really offer any more treatment solutions, even when, if you had caught it early, there could have been. So we focus more on going to the communities and doing a lot of education in the grassroots. So as somebody who has this um, surgical background, for personalized medicine, how do you see it evolving for breast cancer patients? Uh, very interesting because uh, uh, before the surgeons, uh, or yes, is cancer or not, uh, need to do the surgery first and then the rest. And nowadays, before we cut, we have to stand back and say, but what type of breast cancer we're talking about? Is it uh, a triple negative? It is a, a, a genetic uh, mm. inherited disease? What type of cancer we are really dealing with? And this is, is very specific to each patient because mm. we need to 
to talk to the patient about her family history. And we also need to know, as I say normally, we need to talk to the cells. We need to know more about the cells. The cells. Mm -hmm. The cells, the DNA of the cells, mostly that the it's going to tell us what they are going to tell us, even to the surgeon, what to do. So I think that um, we became more and more dependent in medicine of genetic testing. And uh, not only the uh, germinative, uh, the, the germline um, DNA testing that they were, they are the ones that we inherited from our parents, but also mm -hmm. to know the mutations that the cells are going through on the process, on the journey of a patient, a cancer patient. Yeah. And this means that sometimes we do one diagnosis and along the line, we have to test it again with another biopsy, another biopsy to know what that devil is doing to mm -hmm. become resistant mm -hmm. and to become to become so difficult because mm -hmm. there are changes mutations that are happening along the line so mm -hmm. i think i'm very very strong uh, when i feel that uh, countries like ours uh, are so delayed on this mm. process, because yeah. we know, Zainab, you also an MD, we know what to do. We have the tools, the science already yeah. is there for us mm. and we can't use it. And and that make me get up in the morning, every morning and say, I have more to do. This yeah. is not, my job is not done. Because uh, I really feel strong about this inequity, about uh, uh, what we can do, what we do in private practice, and what we're doing when we see patients in, uh, in the universal health care coverage, for example. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not mm -hmm. talking about only Brazil. I'm not talking about yeah. Nigeria. I'm talking about even... UK and Canada and other other places still. Mm. <clears throat> and so even in Europe, uh, we yeah. have a lot of uh, uh, different uh, access yes. to our patients. Absolutely, different levels of access to universal care. Uh, I think the OIC, the Nordic countries, are better off in terms of cover. Uh, but even in America, we see how much uh, the insurance coverage can differ and what's your level, how your level of uh, employment affects the actual cover that you get. Uh, universal health coverage, as you know, for us is a resource problem and uh, to cover the entire population, half of whom are not uh, are unemployed, uh, they're not constructively employed, they don't pay taxes. So it becomes a real problem, and uh, an economic and managerial problem for our governments. But very laudable and very interesting comments that you have made there. And I thank you for what you're doing and your perseverance in continuing uh, to serve your people despite your vast networks globally and uh, interactions, you still feel very strongly about the inequities that you faced uh, in terms of what is available and the access that people, uh, especially the women in Brazil, are able to get. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.